everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace, joined by Juana, a fantastic model. You probably recognize her from some of our previous episodes. And in today's episode, we wanna create for you some really nice portraits with a basic setup. So we wanna talk about the proper lens, the proper flash, and the proper technique to create por uh, portraits in an environment like we're in. So. Um, just a note, you can tell here we have a really bad echo, but that's because we're in the age of the coronavirus and we didn't really have many choices of where to shoot because everything's being shut down, but we vowed to create no matter what. And so I hope you'll forgive the bad audio. We really wanted to get this video out to you. You'll also notice sort of the setup here. So we have this really nice white wall right here. We've got a white wall behind Juana and then Juana is in her chair. And so what we're gonna do here is I wanna show you how I'm setting everything on my camera. So the very first thing I have is, this is a Flashpoint light or Godox light. Um, and so it's a TTL flash, meaning that it's set in full auto. It's gonna use through the lens metering to figure out how much light to throw out to illuminate our subject. I'm not gonna do anything except turn that on and leave it on the auto settings. This is a Nikon D750, and we're gonna start out in aperture priority mode, and then I'm gonna show you why that's not the proper technique for this environment. Then we're gonna talk about this big long lens and why I'm using it. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do, my camera is on, I have it in aperture priority mode, and I've set it to f2.8. Now when I look through my lens with no flash on, my camera is telling me that at ISO, ISO 100, I need to have a 30th of a second for a proper exposure. Now everything is white and beautiful and looks good. But the problem is that a 30th of a second with this big long lens, things are gonna get a little bit shaky. And here's the other crazy thing. If I turn on my flash, okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing once again. Now my camera thinks we're at 1 60th of a second and I'll take a photo. There's really no difference between the first photo and the second photo. Why is that? Well, because in aperture priority mode, the camera is exposing for the ambient light. It's slowing the shutter speed down to get a proper exposure with no flash. So I'm gonna turn this flash off. We're gonna flip our camera into manual mode. Now I'm shooting at f2.8, the same aperture value, but I'm shooting at a shutter speed of 200, a much faster shutter speed. That's gonna restrict some of this ambient light. So with no flash, I'll take another shot. And you can see that Juana is way underexposed. That's what we want, because with the ambient light underexposed, we can now add light from our flash and control how that light is falling on our subject. We can shape the light. So step one, the proper technique is underexpose the ambient light by using manual mode. So now let's turn on our flash. I'm not gonna do anything to the flash, it's just gonna be how it normally is, full auto facing straight forward. So Juana, we're gonna look one more time right fast. And I'm gonna take a picture. It looks pretty much like it did before that we had a flash or just the ambient light. Why? Well, because the flash is on axis with our lens. So the light is going straight forward and it's giving us flat light. There is no shadow from side to side. We aren't shaping anything. We're just illuminating the subject. We don't wanna do that. So what we can do is we can take this flash, we can turn it to the side, that flash is now gonna to go to the left. So when I'm facing this way, the flash is gonna bounce off this wall and to the side of Juana. So let's do that really fast. So perfecto, I love it. Now, uh, look at that. Now we can see that we're starting to shape the light. The light is coming in from the side. I can even maybe push this a little bit farther to the side. We'll do that one more time. Good, yeah. Now you can see we're getting some shadows. We're starting to shape the light. That's what we want. So that's the proper technique for the flash. Instead of straight on, put it to the side so you can start shaping the light, making things look nice and soft with this big white wall. It's sort of like having a soft box to fill in from the side. Let's talk about this lens though. Why do we have such a huge lens? Well, a long lens like this gives us three things. The first is comfort. So we don't want to get close to each other because of you know, social distancing. So with this lens, I can be a good distance from my subject. 
The second thing it does, it allows me to get different compositions. So zooming in and out, I can get a wide shot, a medium shot, and a close shot. So Juana, you're gonna do this, listo. So here is a nice wide shot. Here's a medium shot. And here's a nice, very, very close shot. Okay, so three shots from one position. I'm able to really get a great composition just by changing the distance of my lens. And then the third thing this does for us is it compresses things. So the background, as I zoom in, it will look as if it's coming closer to the model. When I zoom out, it'll look like it's going farther away. And so if you're in a position where you've got a background that isn't fantastic, using a long lens like this will really, really help out. All right, so now that we know what we're doing, we have the proper lens, we've got the proper flash, we have the proper technique, all that's left is for us to shoot, and that's what we're gonna do right now. Well, we were able to create no matter what using the proper lens, the proper flash and the proper technique to get some great photos of Juana. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. We are creating videos every single day for you. And even during this crazy pandemic, we wanna make sure that you can learn from home and we're committed to doing that. Make sure you turn on the bell so you get notifications of when we have new content. And remember, you can follow me on Instagram so you get behind the scenes videos of me shooting all these videos and my travels around the world. And I've also included a link to Juana's Instagram in the description of this video so you can see all the cool stuff that she's creating. And so it's gonna be marvelous. Thank you so much for joining us and I will see you again next time.